So, here we go. The search now is really on. The search has just begun. Welcome to Reporter Room, where we seek truth and justice. My name is Jessica Della Davies. I'm an investigative journalist. Today, we're going to talk about the case of Gabby Petito and the disappearance of Brian Laundrie, the reward money Dog the Bounty Hunter is now offering, the newly released body cam footage of the Moonflower August 12th traffic stop by Mohab Police in Utah, and the connection to the mysterious murders of a Moonflower grocery employee and her girlfriend. Let's get into it. Dog the Bounty Hunter is putting his money where his mouth is. He wants Brian found so badly, he's adding an extra $10,000 in reward money for information leading to Brian's arrest. We're told that Dog and his family are determined to bring closure to Gabby's family and that they hope increasing the reward fund helps to uncover Brian's whereabouts. What do you think about the monster drink Dog found at the Fresh Campsite in Fort DeSoto Park, which is located in St. Petersburg, Florida? Is this the same can that Roberta Landry has in her purse? Please take a moment to subscribe and like this video. For those of you not familiar with the case, here's a brief synopsis. Gabby was traveling across the country with Brian in her white van. She was last seen alive at the Mary Piglet Mexican Grill on August 27th. For more information, please see my video, Dirty Laundry, Was Brian Gaslighting Gabby? I will link it for you in the description below. Gabby was reported missing on September 11th, after Brian returned home to Northport, Florida on September 1st. To be clear, Brian returned to Northport, Florida on September 1st, driving Gabby's van with Gabby's cell phone, but never contacted Gabby's parents or reported her missing. Instead, the Laundry family reportedly went camping to Fort DeSoto Park. Does anybody else find it odd that Brian and his parents decided that this was a great time to go camping? The pair were taking a cross-country road trip from Long Island, New York, where Gabby's parents lived. And the couple had been documenting their journey on social media while living the van life. Remains belonging to Gabby were found as authorities conducted a search around the Spread Creek area. I'm going to play for you the audio of the newly released Mohab police stop. And then let's talk about the murder of the Moonflower employee and her girlfriend. Recall the Moab police stop on August 12th, which was due to the altercation where Brian is accused of slapping Gabby as they left the Moonflower grocery co-op where one of the murder victims was working that day. Brian wouldn't have known who reported his altercation with Gabby to the police, right? We're going to deal with this after listening to this very important newly released body cam audio. So please stay with me until then. Did you get, did you get hit in the face? Yeah. Kind of looks like something like hit you in the face. Yeah. And then over on your arm, yeah. your shoulder, right here. That's, that's new, huh? Does it have a new mark? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Did I see the other side of your face? So. Saying you hit him and then I, I understand 
understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because, you know. I guess, I guess. Yeah, but I hit him first. Where did he hit you? Don't, don't worry. Just be honest. Like, 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 However, she did not implicate Brian. Could the police have done a better job with this altercation? Let me know what you think about this information in the comment section below. So Gabby and Brian had a horrific argument outside the Utah grocery store called the Moonflower. A 911 call was placed to authorities. The Mohab police pulled them over. And now we're learning that a young woman who worked at the Moonflower was found murdered with her girlfriend. The bizarre coincidence between Gabby's death and the murders of Kylan Schultz and Crystal Turner have many people wondering if Brian thought Kylan made the 911 call to Mohab police and if he was possibly involved in her death. So here's what we know. We know the Mohab Police Department were called on August 12th after the altercation outside the Moonflower Grocery Co-op. We know Brian was taken to the Bowen Motel, which was just two minutes from the Moonflower Grocery Co-op, where Kylan was working. Friday, August 13th, Kylan and Crystal were seen for the last time in a bar called Woody's Tavern in Mohab. And just a couple of days later, they were found dead in their campsite. The sheriff's office isn't ruling out the possibility that these cases are connected to the Gabby Petito case. The Grand County Sheriff's Office has been in contact with Florida authorities, and they say they are actively looking into the connection between these two cases. Kylan and Crystal were found at their campsite in the South Mesa area of the LaSalle Mountains, and the unsealed search warrant says the pair were found in a nearby creek. The documents also say that Kylan had told her friends that there was a creepy man around their camp, a man that was intimidating the women. Although Kylan didn't call the police on Brian on August the 12th, Brian didn't know that. The FBI is trying to collect Brian's DNA, and that would provide more information about all three deaths. So is Brian a serial killer? Kylan and Crystal reported that a man was hanging around their campground, acting very strangely. We know Kylan worked at the Moonflower, and we know that Brian wouldn't have known who reported him on August the 12th. So did Brian think it was Kylan? Staff at the Bowen Motel in Mohab, Utah confirmed that Brian did stay there after police drove him on August the 12th. The Bowen Motel is just around the corner from the Moonflower grocery store. According to Google Maps, it's just two minutes away. It's also close to Woody's Tavern, where the women were seen for the last time on August 13th. Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.